Hey, I'm Jay, and this is making an eye in ZBrush. This is what we'll be making. Here's our eye, and the eyeball right now is inside of Keyshot, uh, which is what I chose to render it with. Uh, but the objects that we're making can be rendered in any rendering engine. Uh, I'm using Keyshot because it's really easy with the ZBrush bridge. Um, it, it's pretty straightforward, and um, yeah, for all the purposes I need, it's perfect. But this will work in any kind of renderer, Mental Ray or Render Man or whatever you have available to you. Um, it's fine. And I want to first, before we jump into the making of it, uh, I want to go over the couple key features that are important to keep in mind when making an eyeball. Um, because this isn't just limited to a human eyeball. I mean, this, you know, this method, you could make any eye, aliens or monsters or creatures, animals, whatever you want. Um, so the key here is making the two objects, the eyeball and the lens on the outside, and creating materials for those two that when rendered produce a realistic result the, and behave the way that our eyes do in the real world. So from the side here, we can first I can first go over the shape of the lens. So with the lens bowing out like this, um, and pay attention, this is important that it doesn't, it's not um, a perfect circle here and then has a sharp transition, like where there's like 90 degree angles. Uh, it bows out, uh, you know, kind of, you can picture the center point um, gradient, like pushing like a, like a ball coming up through a blanket or something. Um, I mean, the reason we even have this lens ev evolutionarily is to be bringing in all the light uh, from all the angles, focusing it into our pupil so that we can get a full range. It, the opposite of a pinhole camera, the lens literally is bringing in as much light as possible. And just like a lens, we're we're in Keyshot. I choose to render this as the glass material and produces what we're seeing right here. This is a refraction. It's simulating the light coming in through the lens and refracting and bending the light around so we can see the iris. Now, if I turn off um, the lens, we will see how important this is. Now, this looks like an eyeball, but if I turn off the glass lens, that looks horrifying. So this is what the eye would be without the lens, um, which, is, which is crazy. So you can actually see not only is it, not only is it refracting and bending around so we can see it from the side? Um, but also, it's changing the it's refracting it from all the angles, so you can see how the pupil changes. And this is what gives the eye its look. Like it's in, this is important. Um, the lens being rendered as glass with the refraction index of glass is one of the most important aspects. Um, and the re the way you make that important is by sim by making those two models. The lens is the thing with the bubble, and without the lens, we have the uh, ball with the iris, and you get this. So with the iris bowing in, kind of the opposite of the lens. Um, I'm just trying to kind of draw a diagram here so you can see. I mean, you probably get it. That just looks like I'm drawing a uh, an iris pattern. But with the light coming in from here, what you get is uh, it being shaded from the top and then a highlight right here. And then with the uh, lens, you'll still see this highlight and then you'll get a reflection on top of it. And those, those two objects being rendered on top of each other or See, you seeing those two objects and those two different material properties on top of each other, uh, that's what gives eyes their distinct look. And it's important to kind of, um, to make eyes in a realistic way, even if it's stylized. You'll notice in Disney and Pixar movies that even though they may, instead of a kind of blurry line, it might be very crisp. Uh, instead of a very organic looking iris, it might be very straight lines or stylized or just one solid color. But it will be it will have an iris that that scoops in uh, just like ours do, and it will have a lens that bows out and it'll be rendered like glass. or it, it just it, it will always be round. Like you won't ever see um, an eye that's flat or scooped in like that because that that looks like it hurts. you know <laughs> Let's look at some masters here as an example. 
uh, some some of the most famous eyes for me anyway. So we'll see here in Davy Jones. Uh, we have the highlight here, right? So we have the light coming from this way. So that means highlight reflect refraction right here and right here because the inside of the iris right here has a reflection and this is shadow because the light's coming from in here so it's hitting this because it's because it's curved in right and then even though there's shadow here because it bolt it bowls in because of the lens on top now we get a highlight and same with the other famous eye good old golem so same deal here we have a highlight right here there's actually two light sources which you can see and shadow here and highlight here so shadow highlight on the shadow and then highlight it's probably a little bit easier to see than this one so there we go uh, now we'll jump into zbrush and start making our eyeball so in our scene we start with a sphere primitive we make that a poly mesh to be able to sculpt on it and work with it we save our file for for safety and then in the different meshing I rotated it so that the topology pointed towards me now I'm dragging out an alpha and playing with the strength of it until I get the depth that I want from the middle point I'm just dragging it out the size of the iris like how far I'm going is about half of the radius of that circle you're looking at the eyeball with no perspective then I delete the ring that is the pupil the hole in the middle of the eye and then uh, I extruded it in the display properties and you have to flip it uh, I extruded it with Z modeler so that my pupil hole isn't just straight and it's it has some thickness there um, so then I go up and I turn on symmetry radial symmetry uh, and I put it to Z so that you can see you can play with how many times it duplicates your work here and now that's how I get you get to work radially now and like a lathe um, and that's what's going to speed up this beginning process here and we'll be able to use that pretty often since um, it's so radial um, so now a mixture of the damn standard brush the standard the actual standard brush uh, to just create these lines and I'm going off reference uh, that reference link is in the description if you want to look at the same things I was looking at um, but I also know generally like I'm you know my goal is isn't to make some scientific uh, macro photography eye. My goal is to have a model of an eye that renders well uh, at a reasonable distance. Um, and you know, like a one-day project. You know, I really, I really encourage. Uh, if you're watching and you're interested, you should totally try to follow along and make this. You could totally make it in one day, and it's a great way to go through the pipeline of ZBrush to KeyShot and end up with an image. So I started out this pattern um, with the radial symmetry just to like lay something down and then I turn it off and I go in there and and edit it um, to my liking and you can see how uh, I'm making this wrinkly muscle here that goes around maybe not muscle but this these wrinkly fibers um, and then I'm blurring by making soft strokes um, the mask there uh, to hopefully create this gradient when I puff it out like now um, and masks are a great way to start a big shape like this. Uh, using inflate or standard or form soft, whatever you want. You can kind of pop that thing out and then smooth it a bit, kind of grading it out. Um, you know, you think about specks in the eye. Um, little like circles or specks you can see in some people's eyes or uh, dark kind of shapes moving in you know when you're when you think about abstract paintings and stuff like that are just ways to make eyes look pretty uh, realistically those are like shadows casted by these by these things um, so it's kind of interesting uh, we're gonna be doing a mixture here of like trying to make these forms that make the light interesting around the iris but also we're gonna be painting in lights and dark values um, it's always a great way to emphasize whatever you like and you know push the push it to have a little bit more personality, a little bit more style than we want because you know we're gonna make it. We're not just gonna try to make a boringish eye. We're gonna want to make an eye that's uh, somehow a little bit special. So now we're gonna get in to start painting some of this to pop out those forms. You can see we didn't go too far with the forms already. 
but with that, like by using cavity mask here, um, and diff I'm playing with values too to try to just get different effects. Like what I want is to just come up with uh, layers of value and color here that make it a little bit more complicated. Uh, you can see there's like, I'm playing with saturation and not saturation. And now with a bright blue color here, I get to pop out that shape I mentioned. Uh, if you kind of squint, I, I'm always doing that occasionally when I work, like just to see what are the what's the blurry value read is. Uh, here I'm darkening up those specs, emphasizing them. Uh, and pretty soon I'm going to test out what it looks like in Keyshot so that we can make some changes here. But overall, I'm just trying to emphasize these shapes with value and form here. I'm experimenting too all the time. You know, I don't I don't know exactly what I'm gonna like yet. Uh, here I'm darkening in, uh, and I'm gonna keep changing the iris too because uh, so many irises are different, uh, and I didn't want to make one that was like really sp like exceptional. You know, uh, because I'd like to be a little bit generic, and I'll just keep this in my file, uh, in my files, and use them in projects. So um, the way I got the lens is I sectioned, I masked off the bit that's been chopped off to make the initial pupil with the transparency, I see where it is. And then I blur that mask a lot so that that gradient helps me pull that little bubble out. Uh, now, because we extruded it, we can't use the UVs of the primitive. So I went up to the plugin, the UV master, and I just unwrapped it without symmetry, and now we have UVs. So um, then I went to texture, new from polypaint, cloned it, exported it as a TIFF. Now I'm importing that TIFF into Keyshot. Now I'm seeing how does this look with the lens on the outside as glass and with what we've painted on the inside. And now with the connection made, uh, you know, I'm gonna try to go back and forth here and see, you know, see what I can see in ZBrush, what I wanna improve. Uh, you can see the shadows now casted by those forms I was talking about. Especially on the bottom, you can really see the difference here. It gets so dark in Keyshot, and that's because it's actually casting a shadow there. Every now and again, you have to reapply. In the end, I think I end up thinking that it's too much contrast. Uh, that kind of squiggly fibers around the middle just pops out too much. Uh, and I want it, I don't want it to distract from anything. I want it to look just like an eye. I don't want to draw attention to the eye, you know, like someone with striking blue eyes or something. Um, you know, if you're making a character or creature where the eyes are special and they should pop out, they should be one of the important features, like one of the exceptional features, uh, then you just edit it, you know. You could take this eye in any direction that you want, this kind of model. Uh, you could make it an alien or an animal too. You could even turn this into a cat eye without that much effort. So now in Photoshop, because I made this TIFF, right? Now you have the full power of Photoshop. I just made a mask around the um, iris area, and now we can make it brown. Uh, you can make it any color you want, but as an, as an example, I made it brown so that we can have a brown eye and a blue eye. And uh, I can kind of demonstrate that you know once you, once, you get, once you paint that poly paint with Photoshop, now you can do whatever you want. And because we painted in poly paint, we don't have to worry about the seams and stuff if we're doing all this procedural editing. And if we want to do a special kind of edit, we can go back to the poly paint, paint on it, uh, rip out a new texture from ZBrush, and there you go. So again, checking my progress. So now we're going to start painting the veins and just the red around the back of the eye. And I didn't go too crazy with this either. Um, that obviously varies. I mean, we know with ourselves, that varies day to day. You know, if you want to make a guy look like drunk or hasn't slept in a long time um but the general thing is uh, is the same it's just more or less red more more or less veins i i blotched in the red in the back with that radial again saves time just blotching a bunch of red and now with the uh, i turned on the lazy mouse stroke so that i can i can make nice clean uh veins and squiggly veins again you know look at reference for this stuff uh so that you can kind of discern patterns and where things go but it's uh it's quite a lot of veins, um, more than I even painted here. I didn't go crazy. Uh, oh, and I even used, um, to fill in the edges around, uh, I used ZBrush's vein alpha that comes with it, and I put it on a scatter brush and just like lightly scattered it around to fill in the gaps. 
Now checking our veins. And uh, now I'm blurring that edge. Um, I want to make sure that that looks blurry and popping out that fiber thing that we were working on. It got lost. The more you sculpt, the more it kind of gets lost. But it's it's important to me that the iris is a little bit blurry around the edge. Like it's a fine line because you're getting that corner from so many things. The actual form stopping of the iris, the color, and the lens stopping. So all, all of these things are like in a trifecta making this edge. So the goal for me is to make the iris close up, not crisp, organic looking, but from a distance, definitely a hard circle, uh, which as you can see we're getting. You see how hard that circle looks here, the edge of um, our iris and how blurry it actually is. So I'm still just blurring it out and uh, moving back and forth to see how our progress is. But that light coming in around, I like that. There you have it, making an eye and ZBrush. Um, I hope you learned a thing or two. Uh, I really hope that if you're interested at all in doing this, um, do it. If you're interested in the pipeline from ZBrush to KeyShot, totally do this. this. is a great project that takes a few hours. You could give yourself a whole day um, and, and take something from scratch all the way to KeyShot, make a nice pretty image, and you know, make it a, an alien eye, a monster eye, whatever. Um, it's got so many different little techniques that will really add to your toolbox for other projects you have in mind. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Drop a like if you want. Uh, subscribe if you like this sort of thing, you want to see more videos. And happy sculpting. Peace! Eyes. The windows to the soul.